I always want to say, and action. Dr. Robin McKay here. Happy Monday. It's Monday, November 14th, and this is your weather report and energy update for this week for the actualization zone. So if you are watching from the actualization zone, say hi in the comments. I can say hi back. And if you're watching or listening to the recording, either in the actualization zone or we also post this on YouTube, please be sure to say hello so I can come back in and see you and say hello and make energetic connection with you as well. You know, the way this weather report works, if you're new to my new to my world is I don't report on the actual weather. Although I will say I am wearing my cold weather gear today. It's a little chilly here in, in the Arizona desert, but I actually give, I tune into the non-physical frequencies, the energies that are at play this week as we're moving into the holiday buying season, as we're moving into the remaining few weeks of 2022 and leaning into what's next during next the coming holiday season and next year as well. And so my mission today is just to give you some guidance on what you can expect this week from yourself, from the energies, from how compatible you are with the energies and how you can make yourself even more receptive to intuitive guidance, more receptive to what's possible for you rather than staying in the same old status quo rather than staying on the same old gerbil wheel over and over again. We are just looking for ways to get you off the gerbil wheel, get you into your highest potential timeline, get you into your highest potential of your life because you wouldn't be part of the actualization zone if there weren't something inside of you that was compelling you to do something different in your life so that you can be fully expressed. So welcome. All right. So the way this works is that I work with my guides, uh, my non-physical teachers and, and um, colleagues who advise me. I have a real strong clear audience, meaning that I hear things and then I just basically share what I hear. I also see they show me images and um, give me prompts, actually, to kind of talk through how things are going this week. So that's how things work. So let's just go ahead and take a deep breath in and let it go. I'm coming off of my Akashic Records teacher training program. I firmly believe in sharpening my own saw. And so I spent the weekend with a group of the Soul Journeys Method Akashic Records teachers learning new ways of thinking about things like emotions, for example. And one of the things that I want to talk to you right now about is emotions. As somebody who has a background in psychology, I did therapy and clinical work for years before I made the transition into executive coaching and teaching intuition development, teaching the Akashic Records. But one thing that has always kind of stymied a lot of my clients. And a lot of my clients are leaders. They are go-getters. They are high achievers, accomplished people, is that they don't like emotions. And they used to say to me, can you just make it stop, Robin? Can you just make my emotions stop? And what I've always said is that your emotions are not like your appendix. You're a human, and so you are going to have emotions. That's part of the human experience. But you don't have to be led around the world or your life by your emotions. So you don't have to sit in the energy of anxiety or depression or anger or frustration for long periods of time anymore. I think there used to be a benefit to really exploring and examining and uncovering and peeling back the layers of the onion around emotions. But I find, especially if you've been doing personal work for a while, that the longer we sit in an emotional bandwidth, like anxiety or depression or frustration or anger, uh, the longer we sit there and try to process it and examine it, it actually expands the timeline for actualizing your greatest hopes and dreams. Now, that does not mean I'm advocating for bypassing your emotional journey at all. But this is one of the things that we talked about over the weekend in the Akashic Records teacher training is where we are now with emotions is this. We can start looking at emotions like an invitation. An invitation to go deeper into something that you either want to do, to be, or to have. Usually when we're feeling emotions, 
especially emotions around frustration, depression, anxiety, there are really two causes to that. One is because we're not allowing ourselves to have to do or to be the thing that is on the other side of that emotion. So for example, when I wanted to get my PhD, oh my God, I could feel it all the way down in my core. Like I I didn't think I was going to die if I didn't get my PhD, but it felt kind of dramatic in that way. And there was a lot of source of frustration about like, where do I apply and how do I apply? And this was years ago, but I think it bears just bringing to the fore because there are a lot of unfulfilled hopes and dreams in our community that are begging to be fulfilled, that are ready to be fulfilled. And the thing that slows us down from fulfilling our heart's desires is the deep emotional obsession that we have around our emotions. Again, that doesn't mean that you bypass the emotion, but it does mean that you can start looking at emotions as an invitation, an invitation to go deeper into, to commit more to the things that you say that you want to do to be and to have, and then to take aligned action, action in the service of what you say you want to do to be or to have. So that's one reason that we spend a whole lot of time in emotions is because we think we've been trained to process through our emotional journey to place primacy on our emotions. Uh, But unfortunately, it's my experience that a lot of times emotions uh, become barriers to fulfilling our dreams. Another caveat to this is that, of course, if you've had something terrible happen, if you've lost a loved one and you're deep in despair and the anguish of loss, you don't bypass that. And it's not the time to look at it as an emotion or as an invitation. It just is a, a time to be with it. But there comes a point in every emotion that you don't have to do a deep dive into it. Now, the reason I say that is because we have to remember that we have mirror neurons and mirror neurons in our brains literally reflect other people's emotions in our own bodies. We never get taught this as children, certainly, and most likely you've never been taught that as an adult, but just because you feel an emotion doesn't mean it actually originated from you or belongs to you. You may have picked up on your partner's emotions. You may have picked up on your kids' emotions. You may have picked up on a bandwidth that's being transmitted through Netflix or through your phone or through Facebook that's not even yours. So a new way of looking at emotions today and into the future is really going to be about asking a couple of questions. One, is this even mine? We are not designed to process other people's emotions. It's like putting diesel fuel in a gas engine. So if it's not your emotion, you're not meant to process it. You're not meant to hold it. You're not meant to carry it. You can just let it go. Just let it go. So after you refine your understanding of whose emotion it actually is that you're experiencing and you let go of the emotions that aren't even yours and you clear out any hooks, any cords, and you become even more discerning about where you're allowing your attention to be hijacked, AKA Netflix, for example, is a perfect place to look at for hijacking emotions, hijacking imagination. Um, After we look at that, then we can look at just the daily grind of emotions. And then you have a choice about whether or not you're going to allow that emotion to remain predominant in your experience throughout the day. There are some sticky emotions that need to be able to move through your body. Well, you can move emotions through your body very quickly by moving your body, giving yourself a good pat down, taking a shower, going for a walk, getting out in the sunshine. You don't have to sit in your emotions. The things that create the conditions for you to hold on to emotions that are yours are things like sitting, scrolling. Sorry, Netflix just keeps coming up as an example of something that then that it becomes a snowball because then more emotions come in and it sticks to the ones that are already present in you. And then all of a sudden you're overwhelmed by this particular emotion that may or may not have even originated with you, but certainly you've taken ownership of it. So if you want to collapse time and space in order to actualize your most deeply held goals, dreams, and desires, 
the best thing that I know to recommend this week and on into the future is to get a real strong handle on your emotions. Not a grip like don't feel anything at all, but just allowing it to be part of your human experience without judgment and being much more adept at moving through the emotions of a day, recognizing what's yours, recognizing what somebody else's and making a conscious choice that a leader would make around whether or not I'm going to allow this emotion to be prominent or predominate my day. And this goes for all of us. It goes for me certainly as well. I'm married to a passionate Irish Italian man from New York. You think that there aren't any emotions in our house? Like, yes. And I'm a dramatic person as well. But we always have a choice. We can make a decision on if we're going to let this emotion ruin our day or not. And sometimes I think that we use emotions as energetic excuses to delay the actualization of our hopes, dreams, and desires. That's an important piece. Am I using this emotion to delay it? Because what happens if I actually receive the thing I say that I desire in my heart? What happens if I feel my best? And what happens if I take responsibility for my emotions and then my divine life partner drops in? It's one of those oh shit moments. I got what I want. Now I have to take responsibility for it. So this whole journey around emotions is about, it's about psychological and emotional maturity for sure. And it's about recognizing that we as humans are enmeshed in this, in this culture, in this world that has kind of a predilection for anger, frustration, depression, anxiety, fear, And all of those lower frequency emotions create the conditions for you to lock up and for you to delay pursuing your heart's desires. We see that in our buying culture right now as well. We see that in how people are making decisions about what we're spending money on. Because the world is telling us, don't spend. The world is telling us inflation. The world is telling us the future is uncertain. And so we feel ourselves contracting around that. And you have to wonder, is this even mine? And what if I have some investments that I know I want to make in myself, in my business, in my life that are running counter to this this emotional roller coaster that we're receiving from external sources, the media, news, TV, scroll, scroll, scroll. Do you see what I'm saying? So as we're stepping into this last part of 2022 and leaning into what's coming next year, the encouragement this week is to really become very aware of the emotional journey that you're on, not so that you have to dive in and feel all of your emotions very deeply and process through all of them, although there is benefit to that, but just making a decision that you can be resilient and you can rise above a lot of these baser emotions in order to access the emotions that are in alignment with what the things are you say you want to do to begin to have your heart's desires. And that still is based in the science of positive psychology. We know that the link between well-being and success is causal and bidirectional, meaning that the better you feel, the more effortless or more easy it is for you to experience success on many, many planes, whether it's personal relationships or raises and promotions at work or the sales that you're making in your business or finding your, your divine life partner, whatever that thing is. We know that the better you feel, the easier it is for you to actualize those experiences to yourself. But here's where we're making the shift is rather than just trying to get rid of the negative emotions or clear them or shift out of them so that we can keep going on the gerbil wheel. Instead What if we dive deeper into what's on the other side of that emotion? What's the invitation there? So that's the work this week. What's the invitation around this emotion? If I'm feeling really frustrated, if I'm feeling frustrated, it's usually because I'm not letting myself have something that I desire. If I'm feeling confused, it's because I know exactly what I want and I'm making excuses 
about why I couldn't, shouldn't have that thing or what I should be doing instead or what I should be prioritizing. And I would say this to end today, the, the thing that I want us to be aware of this week more than anything else is how often you use the words, I'm confused or I don't know. Because as divine beings of love, light, and truth, you actually are not confused, and you do know. But we have all of these programs, and we have all of these blueprints around us that come from external sources, our parents, society, culture, TV, TV shows on how other people are behaving, and so therefore, I should probably behave this way as well. We get imprinted on all of those things. But what if when you said that you're confused, what if you dive deeper into that and said, what's on the other side of confusion? Clarity, just a pole, just a polarity. So if you weren't confused, then what would you do? It's a really good question to ask. I want us collectively as a community to eliminate the statement that I'm confused from our lexicon and from our experiences. Because usually confusion is coming from an external source and usually it's a manipulation of information. That when you drop into your inner knowing, your wisdom, you're not confused at all, at all. All right, there's your message for today. Um, what do I have coming up? I have a couple of things. One, we are putting the finishing touches on the digital course, the actualization accelerator. That's my 30 day course on all of the universal principles that I think are very important uh, when you are setting about to actualize your greatest hopes, dreams and desires. And it's becoming a prerequisite to even work, do any of the work with me is to take this class first, because this is really foundational to every, all of the other work that I do. So that's coming up this week. So stay tuned for that. And I'm also doing forecasting in the Akashic Records for 2023. So if you're a business owner who is really invested in finding out what you should be marketing next year, what you, how sh who you should be talking to, um, and really wanting to map out your next 100K in your business, those Akashic Records business reading sessions are for you. They're 90 minutes. And then you have me for a couple of weeks after that on Voxer for ongoing coaching. So if that's something that's of interest to you, the Akashic Records forecasting sessions for business owners. And by the way, if you're not a business owner, if you are in the corporate space and you're a leader and you want to do a forecasting session for your leadership for next year, it's a perfect use of your time in that way as well. So if that's something that you want, I want you to DM me and let me know and we'll get you hooked up with that information. All right. Okay. Big love. Good luck. You're not confused. You're not confused. Stop saying you're confused. Confusion is just the opposite side of the coin from clarity. All right. All right. Big love. And I will see you in the Facebook group.